It's 30 years since the last wintering atlas and 20 years since the last breeding atlas. Since the last atlas, there's been huge changes in both bird population size and their distributions. Every birder will tell you that their own patch gives them an impression that bird populations are changing across the UK. I think the atlas is important because it's a way of us really getting a snapshot over a really quite precise period of time. This sets down a line, a marker, for exactly where we are with birds in Britain at the moment. It's a prime time to tell the stories of change in our bird populations. We needed volunteers with really good knowledge of our local area to go out and build species lists for each 10 kilometre square. And that in turn would then put a dot on the map. And I looked at the coverage for the last atlas and I saw gaps in the coverage last time round and I was absolutely determined that we were going to get 100% this time. This atlas is the result of the work of 40,000 fantastic volunteers who have covered the whole of the map of Britain and Ireland. I actually had to go and look at a certain area and, and the enjoyment I got from it was the fact that even when I found a house sparrow, I was almost punching the sky because it was a bird I was looking for and I found it. If you know something's there and you haven't found it, you can put the extra effort in to make sure that you get it recorded and get it on there. The scale of this book is unprecedented. It used an incredible 19 million records in the Atlas. It took four consecutive winter and summer survey periods. On every single one of those trips I would say there was a, a special moment. I was surveying a piece of woodland and I went out and I found um, the most inland colony of little egrets nesting in my county, which was just amazing to find. I had no idea they were there. The highlight for me was going to places right on my doorstep I'd never been to before and finding really good birds like two lesser spotted woodpeckers at one site. And as I was just getting over that, I found the first nightingale to have sung in that area for at least 20 years. So what an amazing day that was. So each of those dots come together to build up a pattern of distribution across the whole of Britain and Ireland. For the first time we have a complete picture of this ecologically connected area. The Atlas authors have spent two intensive years checking all the data that appears in the book, writing all the species accounts and trying to interpret that data. Producing 1300 richly detailed maps covering nearly 300 species. The backbone of this beautiful book and of course they present some very surprising stories. The most exciting thing is going to be to see the final copies of all the species maps. For the very first time, this brings together in one place information about our wintering birds and our summering birds. And to be able to see just how much some species have changed in their distribution as compared to previous atlases. So as well as the set of maps for each species, we've also got specially commissioned artwork at the start of all the chapters and we've chosen really fantastic pictures for the species account depicting the birds in their habitat. I'm really looking forward to see what people like Rob Fuller say about the overall changes going on in bird populations in this country. One of the most interesting uh, facts to emerge from this atlas is that as well as many species showing contractions or expansions of their range as you might expect, we've actually got evidence that some species are shifting um, the location of their range. In particular there are quite a few species that are contracting in the south but expanding in the north of Britain and also in Ireland. I just think that kind of overview you can't get anywhere else. These data are going to be enormously valuable in helping us to predict how birds might respond to environmental change in the future. People who took part in this atlas probably you know, may not have done something before and now they're part of the BTO family. A lot of young people were involved in the atlas this time and they're going to be the future of birding in Britain that will form the next generation of atlases and I think that's 
going to be one of the biggest legacies. I myself got involved in the BTO at 16 years old because of the Atlas back in the 1970s. You know, I, I suddenly saw this book and I thought, yeah, I've got to, I've got to have that. If you're a bird watcher, you'll find so many interesting stories in, in the Atlas. You'll want to spend ages poring over it. My view is that this is the most important book on British and Irish birds for two decades. But also, for us, this is just the start. We have years ahead analysing all the data behind those rich atlas maps. It's not just a snapshot of what the picture is now. It sets a baseline for the future. And from this work, we will undertake research over the next two decades.